Right, we are back on the bank again and it's still freezing and I still don't like fishing because I just want it to be summer and catching fish on pellet shallow and that. But what we brought you out for today, something again a little bit different. Um, I brought you to somewhere, I brought you to the clay pit at Western Pools, which is somewhere uh, I was here, that angling to silverfish qualifier, and I drew this exact peg behind me and it drove me around the bend. I had the best day silver, I had the best days fishing I think I've ever had in the winter. I probably had about 120 pounds and I weighed in eight because it was a silverfish competition and all I caught all day was eight pound carp. So I brought you here today just for something completely different. It, it was really, really interesting uh, on the day, fishing such a, a unique venue because this is a lagoon. It is so deep and so undulated and also it, it's really interesting thinking about the type of rigs you need, the type of feeding. There's a lot that you had to think about on the day and I thought it'd be a nice little, something a little bit different for the cameras. Bring us here today, fishing at a really deep lake and just show you the little things that I did on the day that I think made a big difference. And it's something you can definitely not take to every commercial. Like I say, this, this is very different. You'll see when we pull them up just how deep this is, but there's just a few little things to think about. If ever you're facing a bit of a dodgy bottom and you don't know what's going on, just the, the things you've got to employ just to make sure that you're a bit more accurate and hopefully put a few fish in the net. But yeah, it's a bit of a different video for you today. Hopefully we'll catch a few, even though it's really, really cold. But I'm going to go for a few little things and see if we can make a difference. Right, so with my rig sorted, what I've got to think about a lot more than I, I normally would is my bait. I mean, it's the same type of bait, of course, because you know, I mean, it is what you are confident in. But because I'm fishing on such a steep incline and because it's so deep, loose feeding pretty much goes out the window. I mean, in the summer, it's great. You can catch shallow, but now what I want to catch just on the bottom, if I were to loose feed micro pellets or maggots or whatever else in that sort of depth, the chance of me getting it to land where I want it, uh, want it to land, it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's nigh on impossible. So I need to think a little bit more about getting my bait right on the spot and using the right bait to let me achieve that. So first thing I want to do is mix my micros. I mean, I'll do them a little bit different. Yeah, I'm usually a big advocate of, uh, when it comes to pole fishing, uh, and I'm feeding, I mean, a lump of micros or I'll sprinkle them in, whatever, I like to cover my pellets with water and leave them. I mean, I like them to be big, swollen up, individual pellets. I've talked about it loads and loads and loads. In this case, I don't actually want that because if I were to uh, leave my pellets to, to swell to the maximum, you can't make it a dense enough ball or a tight enough ball with them to get to the bottom. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Even with when they're, they're fully soft on the micro pellets, no matter how much you squeeze it within reason, as long as you don't mold it to a paste, but as long as you squeeze it nice and tight, they'll always explode and go into individual pellets as long as you're using decent pellets. That'll happen like quite early, though it'll happen within four, five, six foot if it were descending. I mean, if these have got 18 to 20 foot, who knows what's going to happen. They're not going to get to the bottom and they're going to spread all over. So what I want to do them like is by whizzing them into my tub, I'm not going to do loads, because I'm tight. So we're going to do a few. So it's fishery pellets and the the Scretins type fishery pellets, which is what I want. I mean, coppins can be a little bit of a, a fussy one for this. So I'm not a fan of coppins for, for feeding in this way. So I've got my Scretins pellets, my Scretins fishery pellets. First, I'm going to put some caramelly sweety stuff because what I'm all about with this is the stickiness. I want my pellets to be as sticky and as claggy as possible so they stay in this nice ball. And now I'm going to cover them in water. And a bit different to normal, I'm only going to leave them probably two minutes. Sort of like what I do if I'm fishing a feeder. I mean, I'll, I'll leave them for one to two minutes depending on how warm the, the water is. That's flipping freezing, so they're getting about a minute and a half, two minutes. And what that will allow me to do is that the pellets will still be sort of like crunchy. I mean, they'll be nice and soft on the outside, but they'll be the <laughs> armadillos, crunchy on the inside. Oi likes armadillos! Smooth on the inside, crunchy on the outside, armadillos! Dime, the surprising alternative to armadillos. So, so I want to feed them and they're going to stay in a nice ball, but they're going to break down when they get to the bottom. They'll get all the way down and then they'll break up. It should give me a nice tighter pile. What I've also got, which I wouldn't normally use, is a little bit of ground bait. Yeah, because if I find that my pellets aren't quite doing what I want them to do, if I feel they're spreading, doing whatever else, which I'll show you a few little things to, to be able to see if they are spreading or not, the ground bait might help them bind a bit more. If I feel I need a bit more attraction in my peg, a few more bits going all over the place, then I might add 50% ground bait to my micros, or I'll, I'll have a play about, I'll see what they want, just so I can get that nice little tight trap right where I want it, on that horrible slope that we just plumbed up on, just so I can keep the fish right where I want them, because bites are definitely going to be a premium with it being so cold.
Right, so we're all sorted and I've got me crazily deep break ready to go. So what I want to go through is why I've chosen where I've got, because so talking a little bit about the venue, is this, it's so deep, this place. We, I was sat on this peg the other day and I threw a lead and we reckon we've got about 50, 60 foot out in the middle of the lake. It's ridiculous, but it's an old clay pit, so it's a, a quarry, that's why it's the way it is. But what I've got on this peg, it's why we've sat here, is that where we're actually sat doing the filming, there's a big, like, a bar that runs right down the middle of the lake. And because there's a bar, there's obviously a slope down the side of it. So by fishing out into the lake, I can almost pick whatever depth I want with on this slope. I mean, within reason, I've probably got seven or eight foot on the shallowest point. And we've probably got, let's say, it goes to the abyss out into the, the deep water. But by choosing a nice sort of marker, three or four meters away from the, the bar, I found a nice depth, probably about 15 foot we're going for today, which is exactly the same exact spot that I fished the other day. But what I've got to think about is that incline. You know what I mean? It's a ridiculous incline. It's probably, for every meter I move out, it goes a meter deeper. I mean, it's a real steep incline that's, that's hard to, not hard to fish on, but it's hard to keep any bait on. So it's why I've done my bait, or it's why I'm going to do my bait in the way that uh, I'm going to do it, just so it stays nice and accurate. But, babbling about rigs really quick then. So there's no place whatsoever when you're fishing in this sort of volume of water in, in trying to get technical. I mean, fishing through the water all nice like that, it's all out the window. Your rig's going to get lost unless you can fish shallow in the, in the warmer summer months. So in today's case, we've had to go old school. Let's go down this end. And we've gone big. You know what I mean? I've got a big old Colmic Jolly on which I had to find out the, the loft blowing all the dust away from it. And we've got a great big, say, three grammar that's going to get it down. I'm not going to mess about. But it's also nice and positive so I can see what's going on. I mean, it's not too delicate, which I, I don't want in this case. In fact, let me talk about that first as well. It's going to be elastic. It's, I, I've been a massive advocate since I moved to Matrix. I, I was dubious, dubious at first, I must say, with slick elastic. Yeah, I couldn't, I, I really struggled for a couple of months, probably because I joined in the winter, getting my head around slick elastic, because it's weird. Yeah, it's weird as in ratings-wise, in understanding what to use for what. Now, a, a, a big, big um, statement to make, I will never use hollow elastic again after using this stuff now. It, it's, I don't see the point because the way it works, it's just strange, you know what I mean? The ratings are what they are on the boxes because it, it's a vague sort of style with the ratings. I, I think I'm happily using this for me, me winter fishing as low as 08 which I'd use like a, a solid 6.4, or I would have in the old days, something really delicate. But I'm also happy using like 014 fishing for, or it's what I'm going to fish for today, for carp with it, because it just behaves different. It sort of, it stretches really nicely to begin with, but then kicks in quick, and with a couple of pulls on a puller bung, it powers up massively. It's ever, ever so strange stuff, but so it's transformed my fishing. Yeah, it allows me to be so much, or there's so less chance of me exploding rigs, exploding uplands because my elastic just absorbs everything. It, it covers such a range of different hook length options and situations where I can pull, even with a, light, oh, a, a thin elastic, I suppose you'd better call it, rather than a light one. It, it's crazy. So I, I'm obsessed with this stuff. I'll, I'll never use anything else again unless some miracle comes out. So yeah, today we're on the green. Even in this depth, it's going to allow me to, to give plenty of power to get them carp up if we hook any. But what it also does, which is vital when fishing in this sort of depth, is it doesn't allow a slack to occur. If I was fish with hollow elastic that sort of retracts a bit quicker, then because I'm going to strike and I'm going to bring them fish right up and I've got such a big rig, it's very easy to, in shipping back, for my rig to become slack. Yeah, by using a nice um, light elastic, it doesn't let it happen. Yeah, but I've still got that power in reserve for when I need it. So yeah, a, a really weird one that's going to help me land a few more fish and so definitely something we're playing with if you haven't had a go before. That, that slick stuff's next level. So back on the rig. So we've got a three gram jolly. And we're going down to business end of proper. It's like roach fishing, isn't it? I still get me place in England. See what Jack can add? Maybe. Mm, nah, not so sure. No, no pellets involved in that, is there? <laughs> anyway, we've got a big old two gram Olivet on and a few droppers. Do you know what I mean? I've got four droppers and a, and a bit of a bulk there just as a kicker to keep it from tangling. And give me a few more options if I want to bring some more shot down. But it's very basic, yeah? There's nothing fancy about doing this. It's just a case of getting it down there, tangle free, because it's got a long way to descend and getting them bites to show up. Yeah, there's no place for little tiny droppers, so I won't see a bite. You know I mean? It's that deep, I wanna see what's going on. So I've got big number eight droppers, three big number eights, load of number eights around me, uh, bulk. It's gonna get it down there, it's gonna get job done as quickly as possible. And lastly, I finished it off, I can't tell you what I'm using, because I'm using a bit of a special one that we're having a little play with at the minute. But I've got an 18, fairly light gauge wire hook. Again, I can't go too light because of the pressure I've got to put on the fish. And I've got an 012 trace. I mean, we're going big. We're going to hopefully catch a few carp. 
So I've got no 12 trace that's going to get job done and just allow me to pull and fish. You've got to pull a little bit harder with it being so deep to get them up. So fishing a little bit heavier than I normally would on up length, it's just it, there's less chance of breakage. And there are a few random snags in this one. It's a bit of a, a weird blue lagoon that you never know what's on the bottom. So just something a little bit more durable that should get the job done. So, so I've got this all plumbed up already. What I want to do is quickly show you the incline that I'm fishing on. So I've chosen my spot, what I pretty much pick is a lovely dark spot where I can see me, um, where I can see me float as clearly as possible. But that dark spot just happens to be in a nice 15 foot of water as well with the gradient. It isn't stupid, but it is quite steep. So if I'll show you, this is the road I'm on about. First, I'm going to put it right up here just to show you how much it changes. So there in line with the air data, which is where I had another rig on the day. There I've probably got about, am I on the deck? Oh, I'm well on the deck, here we go. I've probably got about 10 foot there. Oh no, that, that just hadn't caught up yet. <laughs> so yeah, I've got about 10 foot there. Whereas when I move down here, <laughs> we've got a hell of a lot more water. So I'm into there, which is going to be my marker. A little bit towards this way. I've got me 15 foot there. I mean, I'm plumbing up middle of my body, so it's all nice and tight. But I only have to move this much. And you can see it goes down very, very quickly. It goes down a hell of a long way. So it really does really, really steep incline that I can just let my bait swing in, which is also going to uh, influence the way I put my rig in. My rig's got to be put in in the correct way. Otherwise, I'm either going to be off the bottom or I'm going to be laying too much line on the deck if I'm not too careful. So I'm quite happy with that. If we go with that, that's my spot. So now I want to talk about is just how I'm going to feed to make sure my bait lands. You can see how small that area is. Very, very similar to fishing a far bank from a snake lake onto a slope. You can see the area that I've got is tiny where my rig's actually perfect. So I need to feed my bait in the best way possible to keep it. See, it's come up there already. It's a real, real steep incline there. So I'm going to sneak that bait in, make sure it stays as accurately, accurate as possible to give me a chance of catching a fish or two. So, we've got everything sorted. My pellets are ready, which I'll show you in a minute, and I'm ready to go, I wanna put a bit of bait in. And, I mean, very much unlike my usual type of commercial fishing, where I'll tap a tiny bit of bait and see what's going on. I mean, this is a different ball game, this. I've got to sort of put a bit of a trap down and let the fish settle and then catch them. So what I actually do is actually put my bait in and I do something else. I mean, on the day the other week, I, I chucked a waggler, which was a completely pointless exercise, but it gave it that 15, 20 minutes just for things to settle down, give me a chance for a few fish going on the line. But today we're going to jump straight on it and see what happens. But first, I'm going to put a bit of bait in. So what I've got, my pellets are all ready. Yeah, they're still, they haven't swollen up and gone all, do you know what I mean, all fluffy and lovely like I'd want them if I was snake lake F1 fishing, that they've gone like a method feeder pellet. I mean, how I'd do them if I was on a feeder and what is the sort of like nice and tight. They're a little bit, still a little bit of crunch to them in the middle. So they're not completely softened and they've stayed nice and small. But what they allow me to do is to make a very, very nice dense ball. I mean, that's going to give me a chance of getting down. So what I'm going to do first, we'll put them in. I'm going to give myself a couple of handfuls of micros. I'm going to give myself one handful of ground bait. So I've just mixed a bag of crushed expander up which it'll just help me it sort of like fills the gaps in when I make a ball it fills all the little holes in and just makes a bit more of a solid ball but helps it break down a bit more when it gets down so just by feeding sort of one of them do you know I mean that's going to be plenty just by putting that much bait in I'm not even going to feed that in fact I'm going to feed that much just one little tiny ball I know that that's dense enough and nice and heavy to get down as quickly as it possibly can but it's not going to be too dense to hit that slope and carry on rolling. I mean, that's going to be nigh on. By the time it gets to, to close to the bottom, that's going to be nearly exploding. So it's going to sort of hit the bottom and then sort of stay there. It's not going to spread out too much with the way it is. So I'm going to put one little tiny ball of, of micros in. One little ball of micros in. I'm going to put a few, a tiny few loose maggots and a bit of corn around it. Because what I want that to do is sort of just scatter a little bit. I mean, I don't want any... It loose feed down there really because I don't know what bait I'm going to fish yet. I mean, on the day, silvers were very, very hard to come by. 
but I know there's 20 billion roach in here, so the last thing I want to do is feed maggots and end up with a peg full of little fish when I don't want to catch them. I'm not feeding too many particles just yet. It's going to help me keep things where I want it. So I'm right up to my marker, and I've got to remember that in this case, the slope's going I mean, up. As I come to my right, it comes up. So what I don't want to do is tear my cup out into the deeper water. There's a chance then it'll roll even further down the slope. So I'm holding right on my mark, right on my join. I'm literally going to go to the right-hand edge of my peg, and that's where I'm going to put my bait in. Yeah, so that should sink fairly straight. If it does kick off to the right a little bit, at least I'm still going to be fishing over my bait because that's going to hit the bottom, and it's going to spread probably over this sort of area, just covering that slope nicely right where I'm going to fish, just to keep things as accurately as I possibly can. So within a minute, that should just be hitting the deck now. What I want to see is once I put my rig there, is there should be a bit of activity. I mean, you'll see that little, that like the, the ground bait being active and them little fizzers. I'll start seeing that sort of thing and I'll know exactly where I need to be, whether I'm right on top of my bait or I've messed it up and it's moved just off, but I can see it already. I mean, already I can just see that fizz in and it's perfect right over my spot. So I know that that ground bait hasn't rolled down the slope and it's not a metre away from my peg. It's right over the spot where I want to fish which means it gives me almost a nice visual marker almost of exactly where to put my rig. So lots of water, lots of deep rigs everywhere and Jamie's left his number five sections around. So what I'm gonna start on, just to see what's in peg, I'm gonna start on a couple of maggots. So that bait now, so you can actually see them odd little, almost like a ball of leaves gone in, you can see them odd little single bubbles coming up which aren't, obviously they're not fish, that's just the activity of the ground bait, which is absolutely perfect where I want it to be. So if I remember the other day, I've got a bit of a snag here on the inside, so I've got to be quite quick. Shipping out if I remember. So with a couple of maggots on, what I want to do first is lay my rig in right. Let's say if I put it in, in a bunch or if I lay it to the right, then I'm going to end up being um, too far on bottom, I'm going to lay too much line on the bottom. So what I want to do is just swing it probably a metre to the left. So I know it's in much, much deeper water. What I'm going to do, I'm going to hang on to it. That nice three gram rig sinks really, really quickly. And you see it's just coming in and you can imagine that the bulk whizzing down, but the, the other shot just coming in behind it nice. And then it's all going to just lay nicely against that slope with a bit of luck. And that should be about perfect. I don't know if that camera can see better than me because I'm a bit blind as a bat when it comes to this. But what I think now is the fizzing I can see, it's pretty much right on my flow. It's exactly where I want it to be. I'm just going to edge that up a little bit. So with it being steep, not so much with maggots, a little bit with maggots, but better when I put a pellet or uh, a piece of corn on, is that with it being such a steep incline, you can see what your bait's doing, you can see whether your bait um, it's being suspended and your float might sit a little bit lower or whether it's it's too much and maybe even your shot's getting close to the bottom and it might sit up a little bit higher I mean you can see really clearly and within a couple of casts you'll know exactly where to put your rig so it's, it's that fine line in between too much line on bottom and it being off deck so it's worth having a little play about just to see you find so by using the reflections as long as I'm sat in exactly the same place all the time with my leg touching my leg on my box and everything's the same every cast. You quite quickly find the, the happy place to put your rig. So you put it in exactly the same place every time and you know that it's perfect then and you're gonna see a bite a little bit better. So I'm not really expecting anything for a while to have a go on this. I'd be quite surprised if we got one. There was a bit of rain coming. I'd be quite surprised if we got one uh, fairly quick. It's just not that sort of venue. I mean, with it being so deep and so vast, it can take a little bit for the fish to find it, especially in the winter. But we're going to sit here, we're going to give it a good 10 minutes just before I decide whether it's worth making a few changes to make anything happen and try and attract a few more fish into the peg if it's not going to plan. But right now, I think it's time to get Brolly up. So we've been sat here, how can we've been sat 15, 20 minutes, which is, like I said, it, it's the length of time I'd have expected to have left it. 
mean, I wouldn't want to fish it straight away. Just it, it doesn't work. I mean, just through experience of of being on here. Also, the weather's changed. It's gone flipping freezing. We've got a bit of rain now. But I've just had a first indication then. About two minutes ago, I had just a little bit of a... There was a fish in me peg, do you know what I mean? I could tell it was something there. I missed it. But definitely something was happening. So what I don't want to do, or what I, I'd, I'd like to hold back on as quickly as, or as much as possible. See, another one then. That's definitely two little indications I've had. It's trying to attract any fish into me peg just yet. I say on these sort of venues, if I keep on trying to loose feed or try and loose feed, try and introduce any new bait, then every time I feed, there's a chance of messing it up, there's a chance of it being a little bit inaccurate, it kicking off to down the slope or whatever else. So I really want to do, give it the best chances possible of the fish finding that bait and eating the bait that I've already fed before I put anything else in. So another, yeah, we got one yeah, we, on cue, eh? So, so finally there, something's happening. You know what I mean, completely wrong fish. That was a little diddy perch that decided to fall off. Barbless hooks in 18 foot, ain't too good. But things are happening, which is exactly what I'm after. I just want there to be a bit of activity in my peg. And then shortly, I can try and be a little bit more selective if I need to. So with that rig. So I'm trying to drop that bulk. I'm not dropping it in a big straight line or anything right out my peg. I'm trying to drop that bulk probably two foot to the left of where I'm fishing just so it can swing into the slope. You know I mean, normally I'd like to swing my bulk in and put my float right on top of it. But without, because that slope kicks down so much, it's important to just put the bulk past so it does, it brings in and it doesn't let my hook length sort of end up on water that's, or the bottom that's shallower than where I plumbed it. Let's see what's going on there. So that's really good. You know I mean, just, it always seems to happen on these sorts of lakes, these deep lakes. You've just got to be patient and wait for the fish to find you. That There's such a vast amount of water. You've just got to keep being patient, wait for them little indications and then so slowly you can, it'll give you something to work on. Another tiny little indication then I think. The glasses are steaming up a bit with it being so, so chilly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to catch a few fish now hopefully, a few little fish because it seems that the little fish have been first on the case to find a bait. So I've still not fed anything else, I've still only fed. Um, a couple of maggots, a couple of pieces of corn and that ball of micros and ground bait. So there's not many bits to keep any little fish happy. I mean, a, a tiny little pinch of maggots in my peg, that's all that's gone in there. It's another bite. So these tiny fish are definitely on it so far. What's happening? I'm going to mind this tree. It's a roach. You sure I won't get an England call up? Man? It's a roach as well. That's not even a cap. Woohoo! That won't let me get an England call up. We got him. He gets a free maggot. So I'm just going to carry on with this for another, another five or ten minutes because what I don't want is all my bait to be eaten. I mean, there's clearly some fish in me swim now. But what I want is some better fish. I mean, I'm not here to catch little roach. Would it be in a commercial? I'd be after a decent weight. So what I'll need to do shortly is just try and get a bit of bait going through the water to try and attract some fish into my bag. But instead of having it going through loose like I would if it was a, a normal depth commercial. Like in this case, I want to put some balls in still. I'm still going to put a little tiny pole mantle pot on and I'm just going to feed little tiny balls of ground bait or micros, whatever I think I need to keep that peg ticking over just to attract some different fish. I mean, I've got the option of swapping my hook bait. I could swap to a piece of corn or a pellet or something like that if I need to. Although if, if I'm completely honest that this time of year when it'd be soft pellets, I'm not a fan of soft pellets in this depth. It's just, it's a bit fiddly and you tend to lose your pellet a lot. So I'm not a, not a big fan of that. I'd rather slip a little piece of corn on, just if I feel like there could be a carp in my peg and I need to pick one out. But for the minute, it's a couple more fish, just so I'm not feeding bait into a peg that has actually got a load of bait in. I just want to see first of what's going on. But I definitely think, finally, things are happening. So it's just a nice different way of fishing this as well. It's instead of fishing those usual three and four foot rigs and it being so repetitive like a lot of commercial fishing is these days, it's just it's different, isn't it? And it does get you them bites. You might have to wait a bit for them to come. But because of the the depth of water, I definitely find that at venues like this, it's 
it was something I watched on a carp anglers video a, a while ago. I think it was on Teddy's videos, Teddy Haynes' videos. And that the deeper silly lakes like this just maintain the temperatures for a little bit longer. So where's you find that many other venues shut down really quick? That's another indication then. Um, yeah, other venues shut down quite quick. These venues might last a little bit longer just because they maintain the temperature a bit longer. You can get a few more bites depending on the weather. So the one downfall of that as well as that I've heard mentioned lots of times is that it takes longer to come back, unfortunately. So they can take a little bit longer to kick in once it, it gets to springy time. But if it gets me a bit of good fishing now and then I'm more than happy. So I'm starting to feel like that was like a, just a little shoal of fish came into me pair, got a little feed, potentially cleared me out with how quick I got three or four indications. So there's not a lot of bait in that peg at all. It could be worth putting a little bit more bait in in a second. Just give it one more cast and then I'll show you. I'm going to top up to either keep the fish coming or to get some different fish in the swim. So finally, I got a proper one. Do you know what I mean? I was just holding back on topping up. I was just saying Adam's then. We were waiting for the, the rain to stop a little bit before we put some bait in. But I didn't need to. And it's weird, you're like, you knew something was going to happen then. It was crazy. We just started getting one or two single bubbles, not right over me bait, but in the peg. I mean, there have been some bubbles right out in the, in the open water today. But all of a sudden, there was a couple in the peg. A close to the peg. And I said to him, we're going to get one. And so what I want to do is I want to keep it away from this slope, get it into this deeper water to my left. There's less chance of snaggeroonies. And then now, by using my puller kit, So that rig's just a bit longer than my top. That's my top four. It's probably top half a, half a metre down my number five section. So what that allows me to do is still use my puller kit just by using my top four. So I'm able to cut that elastic right down now and hopefully get him under control. So you've got to take your time. It, it's, I know it gets said all the time, but especially this time of year when if it's a competition, the weights are so low. Do you know what I mean? 30, 40 pounds mega. I mean, the last thing I want to do is pull these brains off and lose any. You know what I mean? This is going to be four or five pound, but I don't need many bites. I only need one or two bites an hour. Stand up to get a bit more height on the little bugger. That's a big F1. That was beautiful. That's just what we want. It's a nice start. And finally, things are happening. So, so what I'm going to do now Let's top that up a little bit. Is he an F1? He is a... I think he's an F1. I'm sure he's an F1. I'm going to top him up a little bit. Sneak a little bit more bait in. And see if I can get lucky again. No, that's a proper F1. He's four pound him. That's well what we're after. But, so slowly, so like I said, things are happening. It always takes a while for things to, to kick off on these big deep lakes. But when it does, it, it can be mega. So it's quite exciting playing them as well. It's just something different, isn't it? Playing a fish with a top four or top five is so much nicer than what we do all summer, catching millions of pounds of fish. This is just a bit more technical and a bit, it's a bit different. This time of year, I'll take that every single day. All I want to do is catch some fish. In fact, I'm going to top that off. So before I go in, what I want to do now, is make sure that rig's nice and safe, is put a tiny bit of bait in. because there's been a few indications now, so I think everything's gone. So all I'm going to feed is one little tiny ball. Just that much of that, that's me micros and me, me ground bit mixed. I'm going to really compress that so it's lovely and tight. Put them in, little tiny pinch of maggots, just them to spread over the area, not much. I mean, 10 or 15 maggots, just to keep a bit of activity in the area. I actually think more than likely those maggots will be eaten by little fish on the way down anyway. But if a couple get to the bottom, so it's just makes my hook bait not the odd one out. It's a bit awkward here, but right, now same again. All I'm after is the ultimate, as accurate as I could possibly be. So I only need to be a couple of inches out, and this ball could fly all over the place, and I won't be fishing over it. So I'm gonna really take my time, get out there nice and slow, get right in line with my far bank marker. I'm holding my join exactly as I was the first time. And same again, I'm going to put my pole right onto the water 
and cup that little ball in there. So then maggots over the top. So the maggots are always going to spread anyway, so I'm not too fussed about them, but to the ball of ground bait, I want that to go right where I need it to go, sort of thing. And now with a bit of luck, we'll be able to catch another one. Clean that up, it's got a little bit of slobber on that up length, let's get rid of that. We don't want that, and one of my maggots there. So that's something that I should have mentioned as well. We're fishing in such deep water, I find it really important to kill my maggots. If I try and hook a, well, I'm fishing double maggots, so if I try and hook two maggots conventionally, they're still alive. Then again, they, they sort of helicopter through the water and you can get a lot of spin ups and tangles and a bit of a mess. Whereas two dead ones, just they, they just hang together a lot better. Just stay as a nice little lump of bait as, they, as it goes down. Just get that off there. We are good to go. I'm enjoying this now. So, same again. I can see that little bit of bit of fizzing going on all the time. So, what I want to do is use that as my marker. I'm still using my other markers, of course, my far bank and my, the join of my pole when I'm holding it. But that little tiny bit of activity from that ground bait, that's like another little extra extra marker that hopefully if I can if it lines up with my other two it means I know I'm in exactly the right place again. So that's gone down lovely that. Even the rain stopped a bit so maybe here we go we're gonna catch a few fish them little fish. So what seems to be happening today is the little fish are responding very quickly after I feed and then the big bigger fish are coming in after that. So if I can put up with catching one or two of these straight away. I don't mind that. And then be nice and patient and wait for that that big fish once I've caught put a couple of little fish in the in the net. I think it's them maggots what are bringing them little fish in. So what I will actually do later on when I feel there's a few more better fish feeding, I'll cut them maggots out altogether and I'll just start putting micro pellets and maybe an odd bit of corn on. Probably just fish a little bit of corn on the hook, but we shall see. So other than that, I'm happy. So the last thing that I could potentially do, but I need to see whether the the peg goes that way or not, is to try and attract some fish. And if I were to do that, it'd be in exactly the same way as what I just did topping up, but on a smaller scale. I'd just simply put a, a little pot, pole mounted pot on, one of me, me medium sized ones, one of them, and just feed a little tiny ball. I mean, a little tiny ball of micros or ground bait, or I mean, a bit of a mix of the two, whatever I felt was needed just every sort of every cast just to create a bit of a cloud yeah you, you need something because it's such a big water column the fish are going to come in that they might be at 10 foot who knows today they could be at any depth just that bit of bait going past them can often drag them down to where you want them so that would be my next step but hopefully it's not going to have to happen and so as long as i've picked the right depth where i think the fish happy feeding then i'll just be able to carry on set my trap catch a couple of fish and then reintroduce that trap and catch a couple more all day. It's it's never going to get fast and furious. I'm never going to catch anything in any other way, shallow or anything daft like that. It's just realistic of the situation and the time of year. And it's nice catching a few fish in a bit of a different way. Right, so it's definitely not been fast and furious, but it's been it's dead similar to how it was me the other day. Just not a lot of bites, but some proper fish. Do you know what I mean? There's, at most venues now, if you're fishing three and four and five foot deep venues, they just shut down completely. Or they, that we were talking about before, they just swim off and you just don't get bites because you get so much room. On these deeper ones, because the, the fish aren't, they, they probably don't know as much that you're there because it's so deep and the, the, the further away from you technically, they just feed a bit better. Do you know what I mean? You still get a few more bites, even in that colder weather. As long as you think about your feed a little bit more, don't try and make nothing daft happen. So be nice and patient. You can still catch some mega fish. Do you know what I mean? This has been for a winter session where it's what, four degrees. I'll take this every time. And it's just different. It's nice and different. This one's been a bit of a bugger and it's pulling 
a little bit harder than I'd have liked. But being a tart, I want to make sure I land this. Because it's going to be a pretty one, because he feels like a, a bit of a big lad. Let's see what happens. I'm still, I don't want to tighten up too much on that. So this elastic just lets me, it's so weird, even with a fish of what, eight or ten pound like this one's going to be. I'm able to catch this, yet I'm still catching roach and it's pulling five foot of elastic out. It's so weird. Yeah, I always feel like I've got the, the strength and my elastic's not bottomed out. So hopefully with a bit of luck, I'm going to land this one in a second. It's Western fish, they're just unbelievable. How hard they fight. Oh, we missed him, we're going to get him second time, no. <laughs> that is mega. And for a winter's day when we were unlikely to get a bite doing anything else anywhere here. Anywhere else we'd have gone. So instead we can come here, fish something a little bit different that's been a little bit more enjoyable, if I'm honest, than, than the norm. And if I can wrestle him, we can catch some big, beautiful brutes. Just like that. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely mega. And on proper light kit as well. That takes you a bit longer to land, yeah. But when the weights are so much lower, and for us today, we're just here for a nice day's fishing, I don't mind taking a bit longer to land a, a 10 pound calf. I'll take that every single day of the week. But hopefully, so you've learned a little bit for that. It's been a nice bit of a different day, catching a few fish in a bit of a different way. But I'm going to put that back and we're going to go and get something to drink because we're flipping freezing.